Hello and welcome to a very exciting, very fun Shopcast this episode. We have a special guest, Maggie, Yay, don't we? Too. This is Emma from Tiny Desk Knits and she's in town and she yeah. came to visit. It's so good to have you here. I know, it's so nice to be here. I'm so excited. I haven't done my show in like a month. I've been taking a sabbatical because I've been too busy. <laughs> So it's like I haven't done this. It's so like yeah. Oh, here that's we are. right. Here we are, and of course Maggie's here too. So yeah, we're here, and it's our birthday month. So we're still excited to be here and to be doing all the things and to have our special visitor today. It's just the cherry on the cake. I know. I'm yes. so excited. Yes, 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 yes. So um, let's just get right into it. I don't know what episode number this is. Two hundred one. This is two hundred one, and we're going to be announcing uh four winners just four because winners. just from podcast winners yes. not the birthday winners yeah because we keep forgetting to do that we, <laughs> yes we said we would announce winners during the live and then yeah. we had so much fun doing the live that we, so we, did, we didn't have show notes we just went for it and yeah that's see, and seeing emma's here we're going to have her announce who the winners are Very throughout exciting. the shop cast which is yes wonderful <laughs> Um, and also just to mention that we are coming to you ad free. We no longer run ads because we hope that you will support us by coming to the shop, telling friends, uh, joining our social media and all the places and obviously um, giving us giving us a thumbs up and uh, following or linking or what do you do on subscribe. YouTube? Subscribe. Subscribe on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button. Yes, that's smash the, That's it. what they, the like YouTubers also say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so maggie where are we at today and what is happening so today um we are recording a little bit early so today is uh end of the sock sprint mm -hmm. um but for us it's actually like the beginning yeah, of the kind of sock the sprint beginning. like so, literally i've got this much done yeah, so yeah i just started early in, in the car yeah exactly so <laughs> we're gonna be a little bit behind but um when we come to you in the future um it will be the end of the sock sprint um our sweater cow we are we are swiftly gearing up for our sweater cow now. So much going sweater on. Sweater cow sign up is officially open on the website, so you can go there. Um, we have tons of kits available for you, including kits for Kareen's latest pattern, the Dun Robin, um, which you can see back there. I've now knit two. It's great. You should all knit one. You've knit two? Because yeah, oh, I knit the little stripey one. That's right. When when the pattern was still in testing, and I was yeah. like, I got a huge bag of lopey. Like, let me just see what I can <laughs> what I can bang out with that. And then uh, Dun Robin. <laughs> and I should mention that it's burning outside, yeah. and you're wearing wool today because she's wearing a vanilla sweater. I'm wearing a JNS yeah. vanilla sweater. I mean, uh, it's not you. so. It's not that bad in here. Well, it's well, like got the AC so, on in here. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's regulating my but, temperature. Oh well, that's that's good because yeah, I need regulating it's all the time. Thin. But I'm not going to do it. No, it's lovely. And this, you knitted this in Jameson's. I did. Right? Yeah, right when the vanilla sweater came out. Oh gosh, I knitted this. It looks um, good. It mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, it's been like I've deep pulled it a few times, but mm -hmm. actually, it does pretty well. I wear it. All the time. All the time. Nice. Yeah, all Fantastic. the time. Fantastic. This is my most worn sweater, I think. Do you remember what color that is? I think it's Etsy 21. Yeah. It's like lavender right. with like some tan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. 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 Um, also in today's episode, we will have a segment from Kelsey. Yay! Um, and we have Knitting Yoga with Kim. Yay! Um, that will take you out at the end of the episode. Very good. So. Very good. So um, we literally just recorded or we just did the YouTube live in our real time right now mm -hmm. so thank you so much for showing up uh, it was really really enjoyable didn't we have fun with that, that? Was it was great so if you haven't watched that um that's on youtube as well as episode mm -hmm. 200 um good stuff also we have a guest segment a guest contributor segment from joe logger joe, you've seen joe once before joe is back with her friend lisa of flying thin yarns so stay tuned um, <laughs> that's so see. awesome if you're a friend of joe's you're gonna end up on the show <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, and I still That's... think Kathy did a phenomenal job. Yes, with her she did. She did a wonderful <laughs> Thank you, job, Kathy. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's so what I threatened to all my friends. I mean, if you're friends with me, you're going to end up on the Wooly Thistle. Exactly. <laughs> you have to tell me if you don't want to be on the Wooly Thistle. Has Nathan been on the I don't know if he's. He's been on my show. Has he? I missed that episode. I'm he was on my my show, like, I don't know. Oh, good. So he's a veteran then. So he definitely. People, yeah, yeah. People will shout him his name at Ryan Beck sometimes, and he's like, what? It's really surprising. Well, so we're talking about Emma's friend Mitten. That's his name is Mitten. Because he knits. Yeah. 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 Which is great. He's lovely. We yeah. met him. He's, a, he's a hoot. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see him at Ryan Beck this Nitten. year. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure he's watching. Yeah. He always watches. Yeah. He says, I know them. <laughs> 
So is he coming to bring back with you this year? No, I don't think so. Oh, Maybe no. we'll see. No, are we're right? having more. We're having a party house this year. We season. are having a party. So we'll we're working on that yeah. for sure. <laughs> Good time. I'm very excited. Good times where we sit around party and knit, knit, <laughs> drink tea, knit, <laughs> watch I'm podcasts, kind of yeah, <laughs> discuss what we're gonna knit next. <laughs> All the dream knitting. I, I have know. some like friends who are new knitters right now, and they keep telling me, "Oh, there's just so many things that I want to knit," and I'm like. I know. Have you seen my basement? It doesn't it looks get like better. a hoarder's den. Yeah, it's exceeding my life expectancy. <laughs> I want to see your full basement now. Oh, Whenever gosh. you watch the show, you just—it's not a in the basement. Bit. It's not in the basement anymore. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I'll—I'll I'll take a picture for you. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah, definitely. So you're up here on vacation? Yeah, I've you been, used to live in Vermont. I right? did. I grew up in Burlington. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just visiting my parents for the week. Um, yeah, shout so, out to Emma's mom. She is knitting she is on the couch out there, which is just <laughs> lovely, and she's delightful. Yeah, she's delightful. Yeah. 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 Hello, this is future Maggie and Corinne coming in here right now. When we recorded the episode with Emma, which was so much fun and you'll enjoy it, um, we hadn't drawn prizes yet because we were out of sync. So we have now drawn prizes for our seventh birthday giveaway, and we're going to announce them at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that right at the end. And we'll see you there. Yeah. Okay, where are we at now? So I think that we should get started with a winner. This winner is from episode 199, because as we said, we've been forgetful. So All right. Read that first one. So the winner is Katherine Jackson. And she says, I need to do some culling and finishing whips so I can buy more yarn. Same girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything I see in your shop. Also same. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah. That's it. Um, like, who could, what, what else is there to say, really? I know. Congratulations, Catherine. If you email us at info at the Woolly Thistle, this will put prize winner in all caps. We will get you your $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. Yes. If you would like to be eligible to win a prize, which and we maybe promise eventually will be. Exactly. Pick, um, leave One a day. comment below um, telling us whatever you'd like. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, and yes. you'll be eligible to win a prize. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We do want to give away prizes. We just we really have forgotten do. the last couple Sometimes. of times. We absolutely want we're, to. We've gotten away overly prizes. excited about our big, big, big giveaway mm -hmm. for the birthday. Yes. We think and just forgot. Gotten, if so. you're looking for something to say, tell us what kind of socks you made or what kind of socks you would like to make in the future mm -hmm. or tell us why you never want to knit socks, yes. which I said for many years, but then I changed my mind. Now you're a designer yeah, of socks. Yeah, I design my own socks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, mm, yeah. Yeah. It, it is. It's a rabbit hole <laughs> that we just love falling further and further and further. Shameless last words. words. Every know. time. I know. Okay, so so next we're on to um what what we're wearing and Karine and I are wearing um nothing, at least you're at least you're donning woolly. the woolly thistle. Woolly. I, I was gonna wear this, but I forgot to bring it. Which makes me think though that we do have a new T-shirt, which is right oh, here. So cute. Isn't and there's lovely? one if you want to hold it up. There's one behind you. Back so there. this is Joy, our lady Joy, and Joy. she is knitting on the island of Fair Isle, here with her sheep. And the rocks, that could be Malcolm's head behind her. Um, not Malcolm's actual head, but that's the name of the big rock. <laughs> <laughs> and so I this, did have a slight moment. I, so like, I looked and I saw your face and I'm like, yep, that needs explaining. <laughs> and uh, so these, when, do you know exactly when these are going on sale? Is it the 21st? It's this it's month. month. But I think by the time this episode airs, um, check the shop. They yeah, they may well be. Shop. Yes. Um, Two different styles as well. Yeah. So we'll have the scoop neck and we'll have a crew neck. Mm. And I like lots. Scoop neck, I yeah, me mm -hmm. too. And, and lots of sizes. So size inclusive. They are all going to be this gray color. They're so soft. Mm -hmm. Are they nice? They're yeah. so soft. Yeah. Like they're, really they're nice. like yeah. I'm just like commercial t-shirts have improved a lot in the last few years. They sure have. Really yeah. Comfortable. And yes. they wear really well. They do. Yeah. Yeah, so those will be coming to the shop. Um, other than that, I am not wearing any wool. Me neither. Um, and I am, you are. But we've but already talked are. about this. Yeah, you're wearing a That's vanilla really sweater. Good. You should that. make a vanilla sweater if you haven't. Because... Have you have you made any more than one? Or... Oh, I've made like fifty. Have you really? <laughs> no, fifty. <laughs> well, I've made so many. More than one? Yeah, <laughs> more than one. I have a lot of vanilla sweaters. Sometimes I use like patterns that have like funky set-in sleeves in them, just for like different fits. But, yeah. Like yeah, just a plain. Crew neck vanilla sweater is like my go to Me vanilla too. knitting. Yeah. You gotta have vanilla knitting on yeah, the needle. So that you do. if you're sitting Socially. at a game or a trivia night yeah. at the pub or like, I don't know, in the car, yeah. maybe yeah. somewhere, you need to have vanilla knitting. Yeah, I think the vanilla will be with us for all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So 
I can't believe it. I, I was almost like, oh, I shouldn't ask if you've met more than one. A lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really <laughs> Not good. Not 50, but I'm approaching someday. I will, I will reach 50. I, I will 50. probably do that myself. And, and I went to knit one in Jameson and Smith. Yes. I know. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even need to like. 81. Yes. Oh. We were back. Uh, we're going to we talk. shared love for color 81. We're going to talk more about 81. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I may or may not have some 81 on the floor. Oh, good. <laughs> in this bag. <laughs> do you think you have enough left on your coin? Tonight of vanilla? Um, yes, I mean, but this, this weighs two hundred grams. That's the, it. Seriously? Yeah. I, have oh, to, so I have to finish my Paul Clay, mm. um, yeah. and then I have to finish Irene's oh, um, Paul Clay, and then Paul Clay. and then we'll see what's left. Mm -hmm. Paul Clay and is then in my future. Not, I know where to get another cone of eighty one. Yeah, or you maybe top up with a couple of balls. So yeah. No, I mean if you're gonna get if you're going to go big or go home. I love it. Go big or go home. I mean, it's 81. It's 81. <laughs> Never say I, I always say, like, I'm only going to get cones and neutrals because, like, that's yeah. what I really need. Turns out I can define a lot of things as neutral. <laughs> that's just who I am. It's funny because when we brought the cones in at first, it was just the neutral colors, uh, but we were being asked for all these different mm -hmm. colors, so we started bringing them in. Like, and, uh, 82 dark teal, that's a neutral for me. Mm -hmm. My glasses are teal, so yeah. it cancels it out. Exactly. <laughs> that's my neutral. I'm always yeah. telling my daughter because she'll be like, well, I just want neutrals. I'll be like, well, what about navy? What about blue? That's that's like, neutral. That's not, I'm like, that's totally a neutral. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it is. Is not neutral. Any like I'm really like, dark is. jewel tone from JNS is a neutral. I love this. I love Knitter's <laughs> rationale. Like, yes, blue's a neutral. This is this is Emma of monogamy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> having three whips. It's having, you know, at the most three. <laughs> I, my, my life philosophy is more is more. More is more. <laughs> Which is just true. It is. It is true. More, more is really just is. more. More is more. And we love it. Oh, love God. it. And of course, then Maggie's, uh, I love this one. Subtraction, See, by, subtraction addition. by addition. It works. <laughs> oh, yeah. Recently, somebody asked me, like, oh, you should do, like, do yoga. Like, I was like, I can't do yoga in my house. And they're like, do it in your living room. And I was like, you think that there's room in my living room to do yoga on the floor? <laughs> There's so much knitting. <laughs> no. At least you have a, you know, a soft landing should do. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Although needles. Yeah. One yeah. time I stepped on a needle. Don't do that. Uh, Don't keep your knitting project on the floor without putting the needles away. Yeah, safely away. Do not step on a knitting needle. The yeah. more you know. Is that still yeah. a thing on TV? Uh, the more you know. No. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. I do. Okay, so we digress. <laughs> anyway. We digress. So what's next, Maggie? I think we should throw to our first segment. I think we should go watch Joe and her friend Lisa. Yay. They are talking all about socks. Yes. Um, and sharing some of their socks with you along with some of their sweaters. Oh, see so. you on the other side. Mm -hmm. Hi, Willie Fizzers. I'm Joe Lager, back again uh, to visit with you. And today I brought along my friend Lisa Faust. Greetings. Who's a fellow Kistler and fan of Wooly Wool. It's true. And we met for lunch yesterday uh, to catch up. I had the day off and we had a fabulous lunch at a Thai restaurant. And in the middle of lunch, we both realized <laughs> that it was 12 o'clock on Friday <laughs> and that it was the day that the, the Wooly Thistle sock bags were going on sale. So we both whipped out our phones. <laughs> I ordered one bag. Lisa might have ordered two, maybe, and a few other things to go along because you know <laughs> things just jump in your cart while you're ordering. So. You just have to go with what you think is right. <laughs> so, so we also thought, well, the, the sock sprint is coming up, and maybe we should do a little video to share with you the socks we've made with woolly thistle yarns. So that's what we're here to do today. It's true. So Lisa, you want to get started with the most recent pair of socks? I you would. Made? So my most recent pair of socks are um, Caramel Sauce Socks by Hohi Locatelli. And I used the, let me show oh, you the sock yes. first. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't they so pretty? This lace pattern is just outrageous. And you and I both like when it's kind of stretchy, when mm. it's got that ribbing to it. So yeah. it really hugs your foot. It's true. So we, I used the Yarnadelic yarn, which we both decided was from our selection box in 2021. Yeah. So we've decided to this challenge ourselves. Mine, which I haven't used Yes, yet. <laughs> it's true. I didn't buy two selection boxes. Well, I may have in the past, but let's just not comment <laughs> on that. Anyway, the Yarnadelic is what I made that out of. And that yarn was transformed as I knit it. I couldn't believe it is silky 
it is soft, it's tough. I'm really, really excited to wear these socks. So um, dive into your selection boxes, people, and grab your hair in a delic and get knitting. Yeah. So I've been trying so to lovely. decide what to do with mine, and I have a bit of a sad story that's not related to your, well, only somewhat related to your Nutellic, <laughs> but I had made a pavement sweater out of some hand-dyed superwash yarn I had, um, and probably a couple of years ago, my dog, when he was a puppy, ate a big hole in the middle of the sweater. He's very cute. He's very cute, which is why I've kept him. <laughs> yeah. And I also kept the sweater for two years. I just threw it out this morning because I was just like, Joe, what are you doing? <laughs> this is not feltable. <laughs> if the hole was like this big, it was not recoverable. Uh, so, but I, I really liked that pavement sweater. You're mm -hmm. Vellamacki. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Uh, the Finnish designer that collaborates with Hohi Locatelli. That's but, right. I'm glad you can say her name. Um, so I was thinking Yarnadelic would be beautiful in mm. that pavement sweater. So I might just have to get myself more of that to make myself a new pavement sweater to, yeah. Excellent idea. Have one again. But back to socks. Sure. Back to socks. You have a couple of great uh, Christmassy sock examples. That's right. So you brought the yarn that these socks are made out of. I just knit them in stockinette. I don't know. Sometimes when they're patterned, it's just so nice. So Joe brought the yarn. It's the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply. It's their Christmas edition from a few years ago. This one's Candy Cane. Yeah, and I love this yarn. It just wears like iron. I love it. Yeah, and I was thinking, I've had this yarn not that long. I think I brought it last Christmas, but it's always nice to do these things before Christmas. So maybe for the sock sprint, I will do a little Christmas in July. And I also got this chocolate lime to do nice. contrasting heels and toes. So maybe this is what I'll do for the sock sprint this year. Perfect. And you have another of there. I have another for inspiration, some Christmas in July, if you decide that's what you'd like to do. These are the fairy light. I think they're called fairy lights. Yeah. yeah. And they have a little bit of glitter sparkle. in there, a little sparkly sparkle. They are delightful. Once again, just knit and stock in it because sometimes you just have to let the pattern do its work. All right. And then it's one true. of my favorite sock yarns at the Wooly Thistle is the John Arbin Exmoor sock yarn. <laughs> so I have a few pairs of socks that I've made with that yarn. So this one is... I'm gonna have to have you hold I'm that. Happy to hold it. I'll hold it up so you can from see the so the patterns pretty. from the 52 weeks of socks uh, book from Mina. So pretty. And it's the Kaisla pattern. Oh yeah, nice. So and that one is also nice ribbing. Uh, so it fits your foot well. And this one I I was watching a podcast about a Norwegian knitter and they were saying that they did Easter knits. And I was like, oh, I should do at least a spring knit. And this green is so springy and it's my favorite time of year when the leaves are just popping out on the trees. And I felt like this pattern kind of reminded me of the leaves that, the little leaves that you see popping out in the woods, so. And I know that you knit these a while ago and they just look like she's never worn them. I mean, this yarn is amazing. Yeah. But I have. But you have. <laughs> All right. And then these are the Agatha socks that uh, from the Corrine's pattern. And these are another great one. Also really nice and stretchy. Um, and I enjoy doing those ones a lot. That's, I don't remember the color uh, for the green, but this one is Bibblebug, which I just think <laughs> is such a fabulously funny name. So. All right. And then I have one more pair. These are my, this pattern was called Wild Angelica. So this is color work socks. And let me see the other socks. I'm pretty proud of these. I did have so to, um, I had to knit them a couple of times because the first time I needle. kind of used my usual needle size and they would not go over my heel. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go up a needle uh, for the color work, but. Yeah, so and, and that, that heel is such a cute little, little heel feature. detail. Yeah. So sweet. So those were detailed to me, but they're fun. And they, they also, they've worn really nicely. These ones I made first of all of them, and 
I did do a little pill removal today, but otherwise they really have held up fabulous. So they're just perfect. All right. So what are you wearing, Lisa? Great. I'm wearing a Wanderlust sweater by Sandrine C. And one of the things I really like about it is it has this nice saddle shoulder. I mean, it's just such a nice detail. I have pretty broad shoulders and I just love a saddle shoulder. I think they just fit really nice and the sweater sits on your shoulders nicely. And this one happens to have this really nice little lace detail on the bottom. And it's just lovely. And this is in um, Tuku Wool, the fingering. And I got it from Wooly Thistle. And I really like this yarn for sweaters, especially. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll show the sweater I'm making out of Tuku Wool fingering. Uh, so this is my most recent sweater project. And this is uh, oh, it's so pretty. Amu by Isabel Kramer. And I am a super fan. I guess this is the front. Yeah, that's the front. Yeah. So oh, it's, it's so uh, pretty. five different colors of the Tuku wool. It's got the background uh, beige neutral, and then it's got a dark green, a bright green, and then really a yellowish green, and the cream in there. I'm just really pleased with how they came out. Stunning. So I'm down to the ribbing and I feel like I'm making good progress on that. It's beautiful. So, and today I'm wearing a sweater, I think it's also by Isabel Cranemer called JC. And this I made out of some local wool that I got at the New England Farmer Festival from Longmeadow Wool Farm. Nice. Oh. All right. So that's, I think, all we wanted to show you today. So all there's left to say for us to say is if you go out, take your knitting. <laughs> Thanks. Well, we hope you enjoyed that lovely visit with Joe and her friend. Thank you for submitting that. If you would like to be on the Shopcast, please uh, go to the website. Under the connect button, you'll see Shopcast contributor. Mm -hmm. Fill that in and email it to us and we will talk about getting you on the show. We're very happy to do that and we encourage it. So it's there's fun. that. It is fun, isn't it's it? Fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I think, Maggie, are we looking at FOs? Yeah, and so I think if you have any like FOs that? or whips, I, we have a giant bag from Emma here. I have one FO in here. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, I don't have any FOs. Cool. What's an FO? I have, I have no idea FO. anymore. I've never heard of her. <laughs> I have an FO. Yes, I have you my do. It's a little, it's a little snug, but I can't get it over my head. It. Um, I don't want to mess up my hair because that's how I am. Oh yeah, um, you, can't, you can't touch curls. But it's really, really nice. You can. Do you mind holding the yeah. show notes? You can see on the back. I was really pleased with how the lines actually oh, added, yeah. um, mm. lined up. But um, it's lovely. And actually, when I oh, I put it on last week, and it does, gosh. it feels, it fits great. Yeah. Uh, so I, I can't get it over warm. my head. Um, I've already it's cast on the second it. one. Have you? Yes. I have. This is your own hand spun, of course, um, right? Yes. Yeah, so this one, uh, more fiber. From, this fiber actually might have been from Into the World. Uh-huh. Um, oh, so I think it was her herding cats color, right? <laughs> this is a two-ply. or two ply. It's a two-ply, two yeah. Mm. It's lovely, isn't it? Emma, you're a spinner as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yes. she spins up a storm. Sometimes. I have periods and phases where I spin yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is, the pattern is the Everyday Cowl by Andrea Mowry. Um, great pattern. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, so you knit it yeah. flat. So, yeah, you, you knit it, it and flat and then you back. seam it up and um, yeah. you start actually, I think, at the, the Oh, I love one that. of the corners and then it's like on the bias. I yeah. just yeah. finished the Inclinations Cowl, which is not with me, but it's because it's not blocked or sewn together yet, but it's the same shape. Yeah. And I also use my hands. It's a great it's shape. fun. Yeah. Yes. I find if for all spinners out there, um, if you're looking for patterns with hand spun, Andrea Mowry is a great place to start yeah. because A, she is a hand spinner, so she often knits the that. samples in her hand spun, mm -hmm. but also like if especially for people who knit like or spin um like barber pull fun yarns, like it's kind of like spin cycle and she yeah. designs for spin cycles. So right. yeah. There's just patterns. You it can, just is just easy to yeah. and transition. You can mix commercial oh. yarn and um, hand spun. Yeah. And a lot of her patterns. Oh, and that's then I have another, this is unbelievable. I have colors. another squishy baby. Hold this that one, right up there. This one is eight ounces of mm -hmm. um, Hello Yarn. I don't oh. remember the color. I rate. love the, the browns and the purpley blues yeah. together so like that. Um, so it's a two ply. So I think it's, it's like a DK weight. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely. I was hoping oh, to spin it for the attune, but I eight ounces is not enough. For mm -hmm. one of the color, you need two color weight, yeah. and it's not enough. 
Um, but it's okay. It'll be something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it sure will be. Yeah, so, you're very good about knitting with your uh, mm -hmm. hand spun. I, I am, but I do have a very full bin of hand spun. Yeah, right I now. feel that. I feel like um, a good rule of thumb for me is have one at least one hand spun project on the needles. Yeah, just yeah. so that I can have the practice of knitting. The things them. I've done really well with like spinning it up or knitting is if I diligently sit down and plan. Oh like, yeah, and I everyone says that. For. Like Jillian Marino says that in yarn and texture, it's like mm -hmm. have a plan. Yeah, <laughs> because it will just. Be closer to what you want. But sometimes mm -hmm. I just want to sit and spin. No. Yeah. That's the point. Yes. Is sit and spin. That's the point. I know. I got um, one of those little tiny, like, electric dreaming robots, electric wheels. Uh -huh. If you're looking to get into spinning and you don't want to just, like, shell out a ton of money, you should go for the electric eel wheel. It's like, or even the tiny little one. That's like $125 or something. But the big one is yeah. not even $300. And you can spin on the couch. <laughs> and that's what I do. Like, my poor wheel, like, doesn't get like used as much. Though. I do, but sometimes it's, like, 9 p.m. and I just yeah, need to, just like... Yeah, you curl up on the couch. I say, when yeah. I feel really wound really tight, spinning unwinds it. Yeah. Like, that's what it kind of, like, at the end yeah. of the day, I just want to, like, watch oh, TV and lovely. just, like... The nice blah. thing, though, is, first of all, I have a lot of Hello Yarn Fiber, mm -hmm. although I'm near the I end Hello of Yarn. my stash, so... Do you subscribe to their monthly? I had. Yeah. And I think I might have to I, pause. I paused it just so that I could kind of catch up. <laughs> Some of it up, yeah. They have um, fun, fun colors, though. Yeah, she's got a gorgeous color palette. So they, a lot of them are complimentary, like, they all really work yeah. together. And if it's just my default spin, like, this is sort of just my, I'm not thinking, I'm just spinning. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they're all going to be exactly. similar That's weights. That's amazing. That's so helpful. Well, so what else do you have for a spinning wheel? I have a match list that actually you guys were with me when I got it at Rhinebeck because we've got it used. Oh, yeah. I have a match list that's older than I am, <laughs> um, which shows you that they really last forever. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, it is five years older than me. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> golly. Yeah, um, but it, it's great. I love the, it, I love it, but sometimes I just need to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you have any uh, FOs to show? Yes, I do. Oh, great. I have one of your designs, actually. <gasps> No, oh, it's fun. not blocked. It's not blocked. This is my Flowers of Fort Rose hat. Oh, it's so cute. I know. It's Hold really it right cute. up so that everyone can it's see. It's super cute. And oh, I will so say pretty. that these lovely ladies chose the colors for me. <laughs> but I really, I, I decided where they would go, and I think that they look good. I love the terracotta and the like yeah, blue together. Yeah, too. Like it's that. so nice. So, yeah, Aww. it's great. I, I, I knitted this on smaller needles. Because I wanted it to be tight fitting, which yeah. also meant that I had to add a couple of. Okay. As yeah. as Green says in the pattern, you can just add some just flowers add, if yeah. it's not long enough. Yeah. Um, I don't know where the jog is. Oh, I can't. There it is. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my gosh. I know it's really cute. It is. Yeah. Very cute. You know, I've started to see lots of different colorways <laughs> knit up uh, on Facebook and places. And yeah. It's very gratifying. That looks so cute. It's so cute. I'm yeah. Nice. Needs to be blocked, but yeah, it's cute. I don't have any FOs. I do think I want to knit another Fortros, though. I will admit that because then you can put together more fun colors All and the they make colors. more kits. Is that in Jameson and Smith? No, this is Rama Lamelgarn, oh. which is my new favorite. Yeah, Fair Isle find. I will you say. like it? Yes, I really like the background color of this, which is yeah. color twelve. Very light um, gray. Kind it's of a, a very cool. light gray. Is that a warm or a cool gray? I think it's pretty. Is it close to four hundred seven eight in thinner? Yeah, it's I like so. I mean, it's it's warmer than like the Jameson Supreme gray, which is a darker gray. Mm -hmm. But that's why I like this because I use Jameson Supreme all the time as a neutral background color. Yeah. But it's sometimes too dark because this one is almost white. So yep. anything is gonna like Pop. any color you use will will show up with this yeah. unless mm -hmm. it's like also a light gray. Yeah. Or white. So. This yeah. is a good one, and I have a lot of it. And the so. lamel garn is nice and soft. It's soft. And... It's really easy yeah. to use with J and S. Like yeah. it's, it's not as thick as J and S Supreme Jumper Weight or like Rama Fennel. If you're worried about using two different, slightly different weights of color, you shouldn't be. You should you should use because it's good practice. Yeah, and it works fine. Yeah, you're not going to be disappointed. Yeah, but some good practice are to what manage your tension a little bit. Yeah, between different yarns and just to trust yourself a little yeah. bit, like with using different weights and color work. Like yeah. Kelsey frequently says, like, yeah, you can just do that. Like, I, I, I love when Kelsey's like, yeah, just do this. Like, it works. Yeah. And she's very mm -hmm. confident about it. And it's yeah. like, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. I did hear that she finished her um, Rama sweater. <gasps> so I'm hoping that's so in the segment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her her big, long sweater yeah. for her big, tall dad. Yeah. 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 So 
stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I don't have any FOs. Do you guys want to? I, wanna have, talk I about only whips? have one whip. Yeah, let's talk about whips. All right. Why don't you show us what you're working? Let's see what I have in here. I've got my Harris Tweed <gasps> so cute. little sock bag. Yeah, it's covered in my hair now. Or your um, corgi's hair. My corgi's hair as well. Likely. Yeah. <laughs> so socks. So I did just cast on, and I decided. Because Maggie's, I don't know if she had something on your desk or what, but I've got my um, Rambler yarn and some Rama plum. Oh. And look, I mean, they're not, they're not perfect really mm -hmm. but they are kind of cute. Okay. So I'm knitting a sock. I cast on, I usually knit top down, but this time it's toe up and it's a very pointy toe. I might have to undo that. <laughs> That's fun. Make it more like that. Is this, what pattern is this? This is, um... Oh my goodness, it's Olivia's from this oh, time. Oh, oh, was this Miss Marple? No, it's um St. Mary Mead. Yeah, it's one of those oh, Miss Marple, Marple ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I knitted yeah. this one. I, I yeah, I'm ago. already I'm already in trouble with the lace. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get used to it. I feel like you get it eventually. I yeah, know, I yeah. know. It's ridiculous. But what do you think of the mohair with I it? It's really nice. That. It's I like love fluffy, the marl. Wuffy. And the marl of it, yeah. It's mm -hmm. so nice. Oh, I'm gonna That's do gonna that. feel amazing. It's really yes, it's a nice tight gauge, but I think I will uh, unpick the toe and make it more square <laughs> for my little square feet. <laughs> yes, so that's what I'm knitting on in terms of socks. Nice. Oh, thank you very much. You, that you find these everywhere here. I know. I feel like when I move out of my house, <laughs> like next time I move, I'm just gonna have like a graveyard of stitch markers under yeah, my knitting chair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know people will be like, "What is all that?" Maybe yeah. in the chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like you people find change, go digging for change in their couch. I just go digging for like. There's yeah. gotta be a stitch marker nearby. I just like that when I, I dig deep enough in my couch. I'll find just look around. <laughs> Ooh. I showed this um, during a live, but I've made more progress. Looks on the, good. Is it vanilla? Still, I've got needles going. Yeah, it's just vanilla. I always have vanilla. Great. I go through I moods with vanilla. patterns. Well, and this yarn is pretty busy, so yeah. I think vanilla is a good match. Yeah. Oh. So it's the Biche Bouche Le Sock. Yes. Mm, oh, I'm nice. loving this marl. It's, it's so nice. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun. It and it's a is. nice fabric. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how it'll block up, um, because I've not swatched or done anything right. like that, but. Um, it does. It looks really pretty. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the colorways that is available through our sock bag. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, which are uh, going away. Yes, I agree. Yeah, of course I agree. But, uh, <laughs> let's be transparent. Yeah. <laughs> what did you like about the soft bag? Uh, there's two different varieties this year. Yeah. But also, I well, the thing that I always love about the sock bag is that, A, you'll always try a yarn in the studio because mm -hmm. there's always like a new yarn in there. Mm -hmm. But it's like, especially if you haven't knitted a lot of socks, it's a good way to test out different, like there's always some with nylon that are super washed and some that aren't. Yep. You can kind of see like what you like. Um, what you like in a sock yarn, like, do you really need it to be really tightly plied? Or do you really like it to have super wash? Or, like, do you love self-striping? Because that's fun. Yeah. You'll see what you like. You can mm -hmm. try vanilla socks. You can try pattern socks. Yeah. There's always suggestions of what socks to It's make. It's kind of a little commitment being sock yarn, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you don't like yeah. one of the skeins, you can knit that out for gifting. Or you can gift yeah. the skein. You could try you knitting something else with a sock yarn. You could mm -hmm. knit a shawl. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just think yep. it's fun. It's And it's, like, a fun to... To get the yarn, and for me, I love knitting socks, and I knit tons of my own patterns, and in the past, patterns from other people, and like to try and figure out like what type of sock do I want to knit with this yarn? Like what pattern would suit this yarn? Yep. Yeah. Like do you have any whips? To I got show some. Us? I brought yeah. socks. I have Yay. a huge bag of stuff here, awesome. but I I have been working. Also, this is a vanilla DK sock, <gasps> marled with just. This oh, is I love it. Also, a tip for sock knitters: if you use like you know, half to two thirds of a sock skein, keep the leftovers and make DK socks, like marl it with another color. Oh. So this is just, a, I dyed this just you like did? some it's years beautiful. ago. This is oh, not, I didn't dye this one, but it's this is leftovers. <laughs> I just knitted a pair of socks in this little shorties and so I had half a skein so okay so these are two it. sock yarns that you just putting together to make yeah, DK. Just hold them together. So for the cuff and the in the heel and the toe, I hold the purple double, yeah. and then for the sock, I hold with the such fun. The Love them. Nice. So there's very one squishy. And, then... and are you always a magic loop gal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I learned how to knit socks on DPNs, but I um once I discovered magic loop, I was like, Ooh. I was. It was while I was knitting a sock, and I was like, 
Wow. Zooms in. This oh, changes the game. I yeah. might knit socks now. Yeah. And three okay. years later, I started knitting socks all the time. Okay. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. I do have one more sock clip to show, if I might, mm -hmm. because in my other... <gasps> don't you love that color? So um, I am also knitting on Bichet Bouche Les Socks. Nice. So Ooh, I like the gray. neutral, too. Yes, Gosh. so you can hold that. And here... Now, I didn't... I'm not really counting these as part of the sock sprint because I started them before. Right. But... um. I really like the fabric, although I think I need to be knitting it on a US one. What is this? It's one and a one half. half. Yeah. I found that I started knitting socks on a one and a half and I had to go down to a one. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. It feels just a little bit too loose, but it's nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I knit my DK socks on my immoral socks on a two usually or two and a half. Huh. Because I want it to be really tight, but yeah. we still need way fewer stitches. Like I yeah. need 48 stitches. Yeah, so this is just a, a vanilla, and um, but really nice. It so is, we were really enjoying pretty. the La Sock, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, it is when you when you see it. We did get one comment during the live. It is very loosely plied. It yeah. looks yeah, loosely but it's tightly plied, spun. But it is tightly spun, yeah. and um, I, I'm enjoying knitting with it. Right. So the individual plies are tightly spun, mm -hmm. and then the plies are loosely plied together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Happy beautiful. days. Oh man, yes. I have I have some more. Let's let's have a look. I'm I'm gonna share a couple more. So one is the Bug of Fleur beanie, which Ooh. is the Shetland Woolly Cap for yes. this year. So again, oh I really wanna knit one of these. Gosh, that I is know. beautiful. So this is my Bug of Fleur beanie. Uh it's almost oh. done. It's I just gorgeous. You can tell we, we have to, I'm going to mention that we're a little further back from the camera yeah. than we usually are. And it is just so that all three of us can yeah, actually so think without really squishing together. So yeah. this goes so well together. Goes with my, so I was going to use like a coppery instead of this green, but you it. guys sent me this green for the uh, mm -hmm. flowers of Fort Rose, this green. And a lot of people I, I like who saw this, who saw it's me working on this thing. said to me, that is such a good green. And I had like a phase for a while where I used this really specific dark, like bright lipstick pink color uh -huh. for all of my pops in uh -huh. Fair Isle for like a year or two years. So you're and, in, and this is my new. You're in a green pop? Yeah. I'm going to use this ball phase. of green until it runs out. It's going to be a while because if you just use it for like one or two rounds in a thing, yeah. it goes forever. And yeah. this is a 50 gram lemon garden Yeah. Ball. This is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So this it's is absolutely beautiful. Lamel Garn in 12. The background color. Could we this. make kits in this color? Oh, we sure. could. We could. And it's, it's gorgeous. And then J and S. The rest of these are J and S. Uh -huh. So it's. Uh, I think this is like one twenty something. Yeah. We'll figure that out. So you can definitely yeah. knit J and S and fingering weight um, Rama Lamar, together. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So these are my um, J and S. Oh How did you decide on the colors? Did you do your black and white photo? To look no, I I wanted I. Oftentimes I'm just like sitting in my Barca lounger and like it's 7 a.m. and I'm drinking my first cup of coffee and I'm like semi-lucid and I'm <laughs> knitting. Famously, I also like watch really crazy TV during this time and my, oh. my friends think it's a very unhinged wait, wait, behavior. Wait, what's really crazy Succession TV? specifically. I used I to watch Succession show. on Monday mornings at that 7 a.m. Is that is tough though. Is that ready for the Yeah, and my friends are all like, that's the most unhinged thing about you, Emma. <laughs> like you watch Succession on Mondays at 7 a.m. Yeah. And I'll have like these moments of, like, once in a while while where I'm like I need to knit that <laughs> and people wonder like where does this come from and I'm like I don't know it's a, it's a dark place inside me or a great it's like embrace it my okay. <laughs> yeah. so I just like had a flash moment when at some point somewhat recently a few weeks ago where yeah. I was like blues blues like yeah. it was like I sit up and I'm like yeah that <laughs> and I like ran to my basement and just grabbed all the blues and it was like, I know it's going to be with the 12 Lamel Garn. And I just grabbed like five or six blues. Or, and I just was like, all right, which ones go best together? Yeah. And I wanted it to have the purple. Yeah. Because I wanted it to be cool colors. And yeah, I was yeah. thinking of doing like an orange or something. And then. Yeah. Which would like, be great too. Truly the great, 11th hour. I like I was green. here. I was like about to start the pop round. And I was like, the green. Yeah. Yeah. Good I was, choice. Yeah. I was with my, with my mom and she was like, the green. Yeah. Degree. It's lovely. Yeah. Really love that. So, it's very nice. Are you enjoying the knitting of it? Oh, yeah. Did, did I really need to ask? I really love knitting a Fair Isle beanie because it, if you have an Fair Isle, you should try a beanie first because you need, if you have a grab bag, yep. there you go. That's it. Get mm -hmm. a ball of 
like 50 grams of something else for your base yeah just so you don't run out because yeah. you might need more than 25 grams for yeah. your base color yeah and pick five colors and it's a great way to test colors it's a great way to yeah i would like like a garment in this now oh yes like yes. a vest i think that a that's vest. a nice way it's on my list this yeah. year i don't know if i'm going to get to it the cockatoo gray i want to nip that and i was thinking that, that i would need a buggy so floors to lovely. test the colors to that's a great sure idea like great yeah. idea because sometimes i find that i don't or like mm. it looks fine on a hat but the contrast isn't yeah. high enough yeah and so. then it's not it's not a waste and you don't have your work making it back you still have a lovely hat yeah exactly yeah yeah so i'm looking forward i don't often keep these because i knit a lot of fair isle hats like starting around august september usually uh -huh. i'll knit like four or five to kind of get myself into the fair isle like you know lifestyle <laughs> phase of you know through <laughs> the winter to like get myself to knit the big fair isle but it's um yeah and i give them away yeah. As gifts, but it's like to try colors. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. This would be so nice as a vest or a sweater. Yeah. yeah. So maybe a little bean like a mm -hmm. vest. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Fun, fun, fun. Yes. And I also have my. um. Oh, yes. Big. Oh, yes. This has been an ongoing thing, but I did finally finish the body. It looks so of this good. Set of this has been working. fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. This is beautiful. I think that I picked up too many stitches for the collar and I'm going to have to go back and. Uh, redo that is so this 81 yeah so i i told you you can smell it you can smell it you can if you've it never smelled so one of these like oh, it smells so heavily of like spinning oil or landline's lanolin right yeah, yeah like I think uh, it is a mix. Like, it does still have the spinning oil on it. Yeah. But you can tell, like, the, the undyed, the natural ones, they just oh, don't yeah. have that good woolly. They really yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, I so. love that color. Yeah, it's undyed. Just, undyed. That's natural. Mm -hmm. And it's not black. I like that it's... It's, it's, it's a very dark gray. It's a dark charcoal, but it's mm -hmm. not, it's not like, a, a stark black. And that's why, like, this... this color combo because it's a it's a light gray and then a super dark charcoal so it's not yeah. so stark but uh -huh. yep this is my gorgeous yeah. gorgeous so this it, there's a little band here so i so I, will the sweaters just be this lace pattern mm -hmm. yeah but so i started that here but then i don't like it i need to do some more patterning at the top okay. of the sleeve so the top of the sleeve is going to get ripped back so that i can do some more did you stick and did you cut your stick already mm -hmm. oh wow didn't secure it yeah, yeah. Just, can you show the people at home? Because I can. sometimes people don't even realize the sleeves can be steaked. Mm -hmm. So basically, Emma knitting the round across the mm -hmm. sleeve. So there was a steak bridge here. You can actually see it better yeah. here. Yeah, there was a steak bridge here. So and she could knit here. round and round all the way yeah. up. And one and pearl. Cut it and then, and then I, pick up your, and you didn't secure it because it's Jameson and Smith. Yeah, Did you pick up stitches too. before you yeah. cut? I pick up stitches before I cut. I do that too. <clears throat> Yeah, just in case. And I'm yeah. going to, like, the neck was, like, a little bit iffy. There was, like, a little bit of, like, whoop. So I stitched it down, and I'm going to needle felt that down. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to needle felt it into the thing so it's just yeah. into the neck. Yeah, yeah. Before I go back, because I think I picked up too many stitches, and it's bunching a little bit. Although it's hard to tell. Yeah. Maybe yeah. block it? Yeah, maybe block it first and see. I don't know. I remember when I first started knitting sweaters, I would block, like, every I few know. rows almost just to be like, okay, we're is it good. still gonna fit? Is it still yeah. gonna fit? Oh wow! Yeah. That's not it was. It was. I knit a whole sweater and then be like, "That's too small." I do block <laughs> before I cut my steaks open too. I do too. So just because you want everything those lined stitches. up that way, yeah, you want yeah. the stitches to settle. Yeah. No, Especially. I need to bring in that first sweater that was all cables. It literally can stand up on its own. It was knitted so tightly. <laughs> That's yeah, it's just like yeah, armor. cables are dense. Yes, if you use it. But I did block that multiple times before cutting steaks. Oh, yes, because it's you just yeah. wanna make sure yeah. it fits before you cut the steak. <laughs> yes, you it's can't to tell uncut. <laughs> nope. So nope, nope. You also can't fit in there with your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> there's I I there's a photo of me with the last fire aisle jumper that I knit just like standing <laughs> there with like standing in it like after I did the collar before I cut the arm steaks open. <laughs> it looks so uh, tall. Yeah. And, and could you tell that it fit? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just checking the fit of the, I think I was checking the fit of the neck and I was like so terrified that that wouldn't, because that was the thing yeah. that I was kind of like, I don't know if this is going to work. Now. Yeah. Um, Cause I just kind of was like saying, okay, I'm just, this is what I'm going to do for right. stitches on hold. And I've never done this before. Yeah. Because the last time I had tried to do it, it was too boat necky. And so I just tried something different and it did work. <laughs> it did work. Thank but, goodness. Yeah, I was so terrified yeah. it wouldn't that I needed yeah. to put it on with no sleep. Cutting your, cutting your knitting first time is definitely a trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to show yeah. people. I'm like, guess what? And like, and I take out the scissors and they're like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I've had it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
Screw this. <laughs> Should we announce another one up? No, um, we should, and then we should go to Kelsey. So, but first, if you want to read this right. one, and this one's from episode two hundred. Yes, and this is from Lisa Lisa Mathis seven eight one one. Yay! Mm -hmm. Congratulations! And this person says, "Congratulations on your seventh anniversary." I always look forward to your podcasts, and this one was full of inspiration as always. Thank you. Um, so at Lisa Matthews seven seven eight one one, if you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle, put prize winner in all caps, we will get you your prize. Yes, and, and then, yeah. yeah, I think let's go to Kelsey. Um, I'm not sure yet what she's going to be talking to you about, but I sure it's do hope it good. includes that sweater because yes. I know that that's a big FO for her. Exactly. Um, so we'll see you on the other side. Hi, it's Kelsey. I do um, some email, mostly yarn and pattern and, and color questions, um, responses to all of you for the Wooly Thistle. So I come in here every once in a while and talk about some, some knitting things. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is actually a pretty big thing, and sorry for the crinkling, I didn't think to take it out of the bag, is this sweater. Ha, ta 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 ta. So it's big. It's a big sweater. Big, long, long armed, <laughs> long sweater. And sorry if the sun blows out into these colors. Um, but this is a big sweater that I made um, for my father. He is about 6'5 and he's a large person. Um, so yeah, this took me a while. <laughs> I'm not a monogamous knitter, so I definitely worked on other projects in between. I'll show you another one in a second. Um, I work on a lot of socks when I'm out and about. So like, and this got big quickly. So this was a home knitting project. Like, I don't know if anyone else has like to go projects and home projects based on how big they are, how complicated they are, but I definitely do. Um, this started as a to go project when it was about, you know, that big. Um, but once you start putting on the sleeves, especially, it becomes a little unmanageable. So this, here's some details. This is a saddle, and there's still, still waste yarn in it, so it's not finished, finished, but it's close enough. Um, it's a saddle shoulder construction, so you actually start with these rectangles. If you can see, there's a rectangle on the top of the shoulder on both sides, um, and then you knit flat. I can't remember if I knit the back or the front first. Either way, um, you knit flat with some short rows across the back so that the shoulder has some slope to it. You see how that blue green color has a bit of an angle here. So you're doing that. Um, and then eventually at about at the armhole, so you're going down and you're knitting flat back and forth. So this armhole is flat. Then under the arm, so actually I can show you my waist yarn. Looks like the back was knit first. The, the, this sort of highlighter colored strand right there, which is the same yarn as I used elsewhere, so it's not that easy to see, but right there is where I joined in the round. So right under the armholes, right at the top of this little blue band is where I joined in the round. So then you knit down, 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 forever and ever, and then you come back up and you pick up the live stitches that are here and all of the stitches along the arm and you're doing short rows along the sleeve cap back and forth back and forth so it's completely seamless um there is a lot of picking up so it's not like um i don't know like a yoked sweater or some raglan sweaters there's really no picking up off of, off of lines um so you are picking up along these lines um but with woolly wool it all blends together because it evens itself out it's a little bit fuzzy um and so it all, it all works. I, it, it's a sort of rough ratio as you're picking your way down, and I won't share what that is because it's in a book, um, but it, it blends in and it works, it works out. It works out well. I still have to take all the um, waste yarn out, but I wanted to show because it feels like a big, a big win, a big ta-da. It is made with fennel garn. It's knit with two strands at all times. So if you can see, some is higher contrast and some is lower contrast. It's always marled. It's two strands high of, of a blue or a green. So there's some that are kind of like, this is not terribly high contrast. That's like a sky blue and a neon yellow. Then some are a little higher contrast with the lighter blues and the teal. And then 
you know, different effects all the way through. What I decided to do, oh, it's fennel garn, which I think I said. And here's all of my leftovers. So it ended up working out pretty well. I think I ended up buying 16 balls. Um, and I ended up with, which is what's probably the equivalent of under two, which I knew I'd have some extra because of the marling. Like I wasn't just going to have a simple, you know, easy amount left. And I wasn't going to be totally efficient with how the yarn was being used because I was trying to marl and trying to like mix how they marled. Um, but I have all these little balls of different colors left. Um, I should weigh it, but I, my, my guess is it's probably about 100 grams um, or less, which is really cool. It's really nice. Um, out of the 16 balls, I think I had 14 different colors. I did have two of this one and this one because I thought they would give some good contrast and they were nice and bright. So, and there were some that were fairly similar. Like there's two or three sh shades of Finoglarn that are somewhere in the Kelly to grass green color palette. So this one is 4025. But there's definitely other ones that I don't know the numbers of that I've used throughout. Um, and just for anyone's information, this kind of sky blue color is 4406. And this kind of limey electric green is 0454, which I love. And I'm not mad about having leftovers of that. Um, so that felt good. And all I did was it's a um, pattern where, I'll show you actually the book. This is um, the Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters by Ann Budd. And the way it works is it has, and I can't really show you because there's, there's a lot of information in it. There's, there are grids at every instruction for your gauge and your size. So if you're knitting something that is three stitches per inch or 12 stitches to four inches, and you go all the way across all the sizes, it'll tell you exactly how many stitches or exactly how, how many of how rows or however repeats that you need to do. And so every gauge and every size are different. And I think the range is from 12 stitches to four inches. Yeah, so the per inch gauge ranges from three to seven. So that would be 12 to 28 um, stitches. So you can do everything from a fairly bulky, Aaron to bulky, to um, what I would call a sport to fingering weight sweater. Um, there are a bunch of different styles in here. As I said, I picked the saddle shoulder, but there are also yokes and raglans and something else. Set in sleeves, I think. Seamless yoke, raglan, set in sleeve, and saddle shoulder. And they cheat. There are um, actual patterns, not just the grids, um, for some specific patterns. You can see on the back. Those are some specific ones that she has. Um, but otherwise, it's a, re it's a big recipe book, which was, which was great because I knew how big of a sweater I needed. I knew what chest size I needed. I knew what gauge I got from my handy dandy color work swatch. I knew which fabric I liked. I knew which gauge I got. So I just plugged and actually used highlighter tape to pick all my numbers out because then I can take it off and knit a different sweater and not get confused. But anyway, these are all blues and greens. It'll be in my Ravelry page if anyone follows me on Ravelry, all the numbers of the blues and greens um, that are involved. But what I did is, as I think I said this before on another podcast, is every time I, basically when I got bored, I switched one of the colors. So if you can see here, the light blue is in both of these bands, but it's paired with like a forest green or a Kelly green and the lime green. And then in this next one, the lime continued and I added in a grass green. And then the grass green continued and I added in the teal. I'm sorry for the lighting in here. I thought it was nice bright lighting, but apparently uh, it's blowing it out a little bit. Anyway, big, big sweater, very long, very long sleeves. Um, it has not been blocked. As you can see, I have my decreases included still um, marked with markers. Um, this kind of sweater, it's not really scrappy because I bought new yarn, but it's sort, it would work for scrappy for sure. But what I wanted to do to kind of unify the whole thing was this neckband is the same, and I'll pair it up so you can see, as the hem. The neckband and the hem are the same two color marl, and same with the left and right cuffs. So those are both like the cobalt blue and lime green for the cuffs. Um, so just wanted that to like make it look a little more uniform, make it look a little more planned. But I think staying in kind of a cooler blue-green color palette actually makes it really work. 
And this is exactly what he asked for. <laughs> so um, I was pretty happy to learn a new sort of saddle shoulder construction, but that's my big sweater. And this is my big winter project. As I said, I did some other smaller projects, but um, I think I cast this one on like the January 3rd or something like that. So it's been a long time, um, but it's also July. So he didn't need it right away. <laughs> After sort of April, I was like, oh, I've got another, you know, five or six months. So that was my big first thing. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is my Rue Bonnie cowl. Ta-da! So this is a pattern designed by one of our own, the Wooly Thistle, um, Caitlin. It's a colorwork cowl that you knit in a tube this way, and then you graft on, you, you twist it 80, or 180 degrees, and then you graft it into a, a Mobius cowl. So if you put it on, it's warm, so I'm going to take it off again, but Mine is, is fairly tight. I think my gauge was a little bit small, but that's okay. I actually like it because it's acting kind of like a turtleneck. Um, if you look at the pattern pictures, Caitlin's is a little more down like that, but it also could be the yarn I used. Um, what I wanted to show is, so the Rue Bonnie Cowl is available in kits of the Wooly Thistle with a color shifting yarn, or make, the Making Tracks from Junction Fiber Mill, and then two solids um, from Rauma. But, I wanted everyone to see, I, I, when I was test knitting, I didn't have access to those yarns. So I just used um, yarns from my stash. Little scraps, bits and pieces. They range from everything from like a full Aran weight to kind of a light worsted, really heavy DK, like this sort of tannish color is probably the lightest one, lightest weight one. Um, and it, it all works together. So it's a really fun pattern. It's really easy to memorize. The stitches, um, you're not dealing with any long floats. And even if you did, you don't care because it's on the inside because it all gets sewn into the middle. Like I didn't really weave in many ends. I did a couple of them just to tighten up a few stitches. Um, but I wasn't, you're not worried about fingers and, and rings and things catchings because it's all inside. Um, my big point with all of this is that if you get the kit and you get the pattern, you can knit the pattern in the kit that you get, which is going to be fabulous. But then you can also, I think it looks cool scrappy as well. So like sometimes when you knit a kit, you only knit the kit once and then you're like, okay, I'm done with that pattern. I don't think that's the case with this pattern. It's a heavy weight, so it goes really fast. I think I knit this in two days, which I was pretty monogamous. I was pretty focused on it, but it, I knit it in two days. Um, and then you could knit it with, with all these bits and pieces that you have that kind of go together. So I have kind of bricky reds and I have sort of a speckly kind of yarn. They're all woolly wools, so they all kind of blend and work and sort of mesh together in the color work. Um, but I've got kind of warm grays and tans and then I over here have the orange and the beige and some navy and a cooler gray. and. Um, I mean, I think it looks great. I think it looks really good. I think it looks intentional that I've got this sort of the couple different panels in effect. And I'm, I know I'm swinging it around a lot, so I'm sorry about that. But um, it's a really fun pattern. I think it's really wonderful. And it's one of those great patterns that you knit that you get the kit, you knit the kit, and then you still have the pattern and can make like 10 more of these and give them to everybody that you know. And it won't take you that much time um, leading up into the holidays at the end of the year. So those are my two big things that I wanted to talk about. First being this book or something similar. Don't be afraid of knitting sort of on different gauges with different yarns, doubling yarn. So I doubled the finnel garn. I took the, the yardage requirements that are in sort of a worsted category for my gauge that I had and I doubled it and I ended up pretty good even though I was marling and doing funny things. Um, and the only, now I'm done. <sighs> can't keep my brain organized but here I am the last thing I wanted to point out is I did put a faux seam in the side I think it's two or three I think I did two stitches of purl that'll try to, that'll keep it straight sometimes with a seamless sweater you can have some biasing problems uh, I haven't had that problem with fennel garn but I just wanted to prevent it and it also makes it just just look a little a little finished on the side like a little faux seam it just keeps that that straight column and it is not as likely to twist um, so those are my things. I feel like I've talked really fast and I've talked a lot, but doubling Rama is a great sweater weight. It is a great sub for worsted. And that, um, I believe, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it was 18 stitches that I did um, that pattern. And I did some modifications for different sort of arms and sweater and shoulders and things for my dad in particular. 
um, but about 18 stitches was a good um, gauge for doubling the funnel garn. You could do like literally anything from 20 to like 16, and I think you'd still be in good shape. Um, and then the Rue Bonnie Cowl pattern is great for scrappy once you've knit your kit and you're happy with the pattern and you want to make some more of them. So that's all I've got to say today. I hope something I said was interesting, and if you have any questions or thoughts, you know, leave them in the comments, or you can always reach us at info at thewoollythistle.com. And if it's about yarn, patterns, colors, it may come to me. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed Kelsey's segment. I'm sure that you did because Kelsey's amazing. I always enjoy Kelsey's. Yeah, so she's much. so good. Yeah, she's so, so good. She is. Um, whenever you ha need any technical help, Kelsey's your gal. Yeah. Um, sure. We have one more winner we're going to, going to announce. Um, we actually have two more, but we're going to do one right now. So okay. you want to do that one. And this is because this is how we're rolling. This is from episode 199. <laughs> <laughs> we're just all over the place. So the winner is Susan Drover. And it says, after having recently completed my fourth pair of socks for me, good job. <laughs> you shouldn't it for you. It's not selfish. It's not just normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have started on other projects, but your sock packs and the upcoming Cal have me rethinking those plans. <laughs> Same. Love the duck. Heart, heart emoji. <laughs> Nana duck. Nana duck man is back there. Yeah. Um, so Susan, if you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle, we will get you your prize. Congratulations. Congratulations. And if you want to be in, in the running for a prize, just give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. Um, and tell us something interesting about something your Something about socks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something, tell us something about your socks that you are knitting, um, whether you're knitting with us or not. Or tell us why you don't like knitting socks or whatever it is. Make it about yeah. socks. Something sock related. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love socks. I knit, I design and yes. knit. Are you minutes. designing any new ones right now? I have two more pairs that have still not been knitted um, for my 13 pairs that I designed in wow. 2022 wow so um have you released all of them no i've only released two <laughs> it's slow it's one of those things where like this falls so you got to sit down and actually schedule it yeah. out and my roommate does my layout and so we just need to like lay out 10 of them yes that's and then lot. they're ready yeah for like you know and yeah and, and well, then you I let can, us know when you're yes, ready well we'll then i can plan there. right yeah. and then i can be like hey Karine and Maggie. Yeah. I am releasing another pair of socks in a month. <laughs> Not tomorrow. Which sometimes I'm hey, I just released these socks. You want to make kids? And they're like, okay. <laughs> we can do that. They can. We're happy to do that. Just sometimes. It's like my brain, there's too many things going on. Life is good though. It is. It's fun. It's, like I that. love being busy, yeah. but sometimes like I really needed some time like away from my normal life yeah. the past couple weeks to just like sit and like not. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. my heart, resting heart rate was getting too high. <laughs> Even <laughs> so, as a knitter. <laughs> my Fitbit tells me, yeah, do you have my, my one of my really good knitting friends in Baltimore always is like, do you ever get zone minutes on your Fitbit while you're knitting? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I do. <laughs> How? That's amazing. Like it's like her heart is going so fast. She's like, wow. I need to finish this. No. I have I have an Apple Watch and I did notice that if if I'm knitting while my husband's driving. Um, because the GPS is going, it thinks I'm active. So like we, really we got somewhere and like my move ring is closed and it, I had just been knitting. Sometimes uh, Apple Watches will do your stand. It will think you're standing apparently if you're knitting. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So, just that movement. I don't mind that. I am doing something. Yeah. Yes. So what else do we have, Maggie? Um, what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about the sweater cow. The sweater cow. So um, sign up at, at, is open and sweater cow, I don't have because, a starting date. Uh, it's uh, August 25th. It's exactly a month from the sign up yeah. start. So oh sign ups are open, so get ready. Um, all the rules, all the information that you need are on the website. So go sign up. Sign up is free and um, join us. Yes, there'll be prizes and we have a lot of kits. We're going to record a segment um, in a little bit where we'll show you all the different kits that we've got. But we have loads of kits and they're beautiful yeah. and all our wonderful yarns. So if you're in the market for a new sweater kit, we got you covered. Oh, yeah. And oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but of course, you are freed in it with stash as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think is uh, is it the eighty percent rule? Yeah, at, at, as 
we've done in previous years, yeah. we do ask that you use at least 80% TWT yarn right. um, purchased over at, at any point in time. Exactly. So go stash mm -hmm. diving and just come knit with us. We'll be on Ravelry. We'll be on Facebook. There is a sign up form, which you can get to on the Shopcast. Yeah. I mean, on the shop website. Um, we'll probably have it up in the menu by then where you can just click on it, yeah. sign up and then we'll start in August. Yeah, okay. so I'm sure we do have some new kits available and we'll talk about at least uh, one or two of the kits that we're gonna have available and we're gonna show you one new yarn that we've, we're have we rolling out um, and you can find in the shop right now. Yes. Um, but also I think Dun Robin, I think during this sweater mm. cow we're gonna of see a course. lot of Dun Robins. Um, like so if you bought your Dun Robin kit during the launch, now's a great time to pull it yes. out and oh, get yeah. ready to knit. Absolutely. Now's a good time to be doing your gauge swatch. Yeah. Yes, if you already have your yarn. It's yeah. such an easy sweater to wear. Isn't um, it? Yeah. If it wasn't so warm, I'd be in it all the I time. Know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yes. It's, I just, I knitted my stripey version in Let Lopey, um, and oh my gosh, it's just like, it looks great with like jogger sweatpants. <laughs> it looks great with like high waisted jeans. You can wear it over a dress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I knitted it actually for a friend of mine who's an organist who's also a knitter and she's just always so cold while she's practicing uh, in the church. It's yeah. really cold. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like it has a nice turtleneck and lopey is just so oh, yeah. insulating. And yeah. so that's awesome. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like a... And so if, for the uninitiated, this is the let lopey version right here. Mm -hmm. Um and we've got the we other do one have somewhere. the John Robin version. Um, no, behind you there, there and we have oh. the, Dun Rob, the Donegal color. This is the Donegal. What do you think? Yes, I, oh. I love this fabric. I have a sweater or, that I did a cardigan recently, like within the last year, this red Donegal, but it's fingering weight. Um, and oh, I love this. But, but this one's been washed a lot and it gets softer oh, and gosh. softer and softer. Yes, oh, this is a testament truly to her. Yeah. It is, it's so nice. It's beautiful and it just gets better. Nice. So yes, exactly. But I really like the light lopey one. It feels lighter and more yeah, airy, which is great. Yeah. This one feels much more solid and substantial, so both are good. They yes, complement each other. This is like other. a stands up on its own, yeah. almost. but it's not not in an aggressive like right. like itchy yeah, way. It's not, no, it's no, not itchy. no, no. And um, I think we are getting a little bit more of this uh, blackberry color oh, um, yeah, because we're all we may have sold out. I don't know. We were getting close to, so we got the rest that we could, and it's there's a little bit. Yeah. Um, but this is the charcoal colorway, which is the oh. first one I knitted. I love this. This, this is, is so prototype. wearable with everything everyone should have a charcoal sweater yeah. like knitting with black yarn is not that fun but charcoal is okay charcoal is yeah. okay you can see what you're doing and let me just say like you can do it just need you need a good light yeah like especially if you're picking up stitches yeah you should, yeah. everyone should have a good knitting light but yeah that's, that's true. true so here's yes. all the colors so here's all the the donegal colors and they are they're nice and heathered Blue. That so blue cool. is so lovely. That's very popular. Mm -hmm. Um, this the one's petrol has been that I'm, oh, I would like popular. to knit like a little oh, Brooklyn Tweed just came up, uh, like the design, the design team just came out mm -hmm. with a it's like a chunky sweater, but you could probably knit it with this. It's like a little short sleeve and it has cables on the top. Ooh, oh, pretty immediately. My brain was like, Yeah, this that. would be amazing for yeah. cables. I would yeah. like, I think I'd like one in this, <gasps> right? That's a hot color. It's like it's like a little yellower yeah but it's like the dark green oh yeah, that's lovely really nice. yeah yes and yeah. the charcoal and so then there is a dark colors. navy blue it's marled yes oh, i'm yeah. knitting one in that right now yes mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. yeah. this blackberry though there's so many colors in it like, i know it's mm -hmm. so the there's depth, pops so of bright like this bright one. oh yeah there's like yellow and gold and things. it's like like it's like looking at a John Arbin top and then looking at the exactly. John Arbin yarn <laughs> exactly <laughs> like look at all the colors that went into that yeah. so yeah studio, studio Donegal is made in Ireland as well I don't know that we've mentioned oh, that but it's, so it's nice. an Irish wool and uh, we're so happy to have it mm -hmm. it's the same um, mill that makes the blankets when mm -hmm. we have them which are gorgeous yes yes oh right what's uh, next Maggie so I think next we'll run and talk about Moda. <gasps> right gorgeous it's so springy yeah. so i had to get the big basket of moda basket. for moda yes, there's so many colors oh my god there. so moda is from wool dreamers oh, it's got a lovely label and it's a dk weight and we've got many colors mm -hmm. you could probably like swing like a worsted weight gauge with this too mm -hmm. because it's gonna puff up so much because it's yeah. Really yeah. woolly and springy. And it's woolen spun. Yeah, it's like a light worsted or a DK. I and it's got sure. vegetable matter. Oh, the best thing. Which is my yeah. happy thing. Right? I, I always... like some of the colors are really heathered. Mm -hmm. I really yeah. like that. Look at this. Mm. 
Do these? This one's 718G. Um, okay. And we do have, so we have Moda, you can find Moda in the shop available both by the ball and we have two kits. One, um, we can put a photo here. It is for the Claire de Lune by the Petite Knitter. It's for um, oh, that's that pretty. particular design. It's a gorgeous design, oh, overall she's... color work. Absolutely you should follow beautiful. her on Instagram because she has a really cute bunny that sometimes she yes. makes jumpers for. Yes. <laughs> and there's just like good bunny content. I love bunnies. I love so bunnies like too. This is like a big thing for me. Yeah. This is the worst job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so this is 746G and it's a gorgeous goldy grello mm -hmm. color. And I'm thinking this one's 22G, which is a nice brambly color yeah this oh. one's 1526g which is a beautiful teal oh that's like i don't even know where to start there's so many i know i it think just... the place to start is color work where you can have more than one yeah so this would just be really great for color work six five two oh. is this sort of dark i'm just holding up red. distractions in this the background this is a good one a uh, 114g this is really heathered oh, i love this yeah yeah it's kind of um, and then the natural weak color or yeah. something yeah this is your color. This is my color, color for sure. Mm -hmm. This mob is 605. This is also Ooh. your color. <laughs> 520G. I'm just like, you know, Karina's love. vanilla sweater than all yeah. these. <laughs> and you have a vanilla sweater in like this color too. Yes. 953G. I really, this is like what I'm missing. This is what my wardrobe is missing, like a vanilla sweater. And I oh. haven't decided which yarn to use because there's so many options with mm -hmm. beautiful. I think it'd be Rama Fennel though. Mm -hmm. That gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are really nice together. <gasps> they are. Like a neutral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a shawl. This is the green natural. Just, just really beautiful. 506. It's a taupey color. And 15. I think this is black. Maybe it's a really dark navy. I was going to say, my eye kind of looks like a navy that I can yeah, put on. That's yeah, that's not my It's very dark. My eye is mm -hmm. deceiving me. I can't tell. And 801, it's a dyed sort of beigey taupe. Yeah. yeah, so we're really happy to welcome Moda um, yes. here at the Woolly Thistle. Gorgeous yarn. Along with all the other Woolly Dreamers, mm -hmm. or Wool Dreamers, <laughs> Woolly <laughs> Dreamers, like, renaming yes. them. Yeah. Yes, we're, we love working with them. We love their product, and so do you. My my sweater cowl sweater might be wool dreamers, I, but I don't know if it would be like this or like the one from the plate. Oh, I love that. The oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Oh, have yeah. you thought about what sweater you're gonna knit? Um, I'm gonna be doing one of the kits I think that we're putting together, and I think it's Chuku DK <gasps> yarn, which oh, I want to knit with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, we're getting lots of orders um, coming in with yarn so that we have the kits for you. And uh, yeah, yeah, pretty exciting. And by the time this airs, they should be available in the mm -hmm. shop. So head to the shop now, see what yep. we have. Check them out. Yeah. Um, there's quite a bit. There's so yes. Um, yeah, and I think I'm just going to knit that cardigan for my daughter. I think. Oh, yeah. I tried to get her to that's nail okay. down that's, a color. I might, I might do the Paul Clay this year. I have a Ooh. cone that I'm going to use for the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have just like, you know, Every it's such a fun knit. It's so beautiful. Of... I think yours reminds me of stained glass. Oh, yes. You know, it's just so pretty. Beautiful yeah. colors. There's so many fun projects too, seeing what other people have done with the colors. Yeah. And you can totally um, mix and match what you're using in your yoke. Like, you don't have to use all Jameson and Smith's right. jumper weight. Like, I have all this leftover sock yarn mm -hmm, in bits mm -hmm. and bobs and tons of colors. And, mm -hmm. like, that's a great way to use it. It is. Yeah. It is. Right, Maggie, what's next? We're going to pick one more winner. Um, which is that one at the top? It's okay. So the winner is Cheryl Evers four two four seven. Congrats! And Cheryl Evers four two four seven says, "Happy birthday! Thank you. Your products are so addicting." Yeah. <laughs> Maggie's duck is adorable. <laughs> That's true. I hope to get started on some of those toys later this year. Great. Oh, well, thank you for entering. Thank Michelle. you so much, Cheryl. Um, email us at info at thewoollythistle dot com, and we will get you your prize. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say those animals are adorable. I just are. Um, ran into somebody a uh, few days ago while I was traveling in Canada, and uh, she was knitting the polar bear. Oh, oh, so cute! I was like, I need to knit this, but it's so piddly. I, I'm a little bit the same, but I want to. <laughs> I I'm I want sure to. I would get addicted. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we did what? get more of the books then. The we did shipped. get more of the books. Lina, recently we re restocked um, all of our Lina books, or yeah. just about. So if you have been waiting, um, now's a good time to pop over For to the sure. shop. Lina's and um, during the live, we did chat a little bit about a very, very, very casual mush along. So mush along? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and start a thread over in the Ravelry group. So by the time you're watching this, it should be there. So if you just want to casually knit Have you decided any animals. What, what your next animal? I think my next animal will be Hazel. She's oh, the squirrel. Is... <laughs> Knitting so. that tail will be fun. <clears throat> that yeah. will be fun. Yeah. Hazel the squirrel. It's always fun stuffing them too. They're still yeah. very satisfying about stuffing them. You know what you can stuff them with is bits and pieces of cut ends of yeah. yarn. Yeah. I have so yeah. many of those. Yeah. You can send them. Sometimes mills will take those huh. and they'll actually use them as like recycled fiber in yeah. like, um, what's the one in Ireland that does that? Um, the Tweety. Yeah. Oh, hedgehog fibers. Yeah. Okay. They will. Yeah. And they'll, then they'll give you a discount code. Yeah. I, th I think Olivia and May started doing Olivia that Olivia does it as well. Yeah. 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 I could see confetti. doing that. I've, I've seen spinners do that too, where they'll card yeah, them and card to break them oh. up and then pat, fluff it, it in. Your spinning. Wow. I have tools for that. I keep, I like, it's like one of those things where like, you start with one thing. Like I have a yeah. wheel and stuff, but like I don't have a drum carter yet. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have a day. drum carter. I do no have a blending comb. board oh, and yeah. I have combs. Um, yes. Because those fit, they're more at the entry level price yes. point. You can also make your own blending board with like cat um, brushes. Oh, wow. Fun yeah. fact. I saw that. But then I just, I just. I don't know if I could manage it, but one of my friends did it and I was like, that's creative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just invested in the blending board. Yeah, the blending boards <laughs> like from Ashford are very nice. You yeah, you can yeah. also just do that. Yeah, well, getting used equipment is a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Recycling that, too. that way. Yeah, and if you're looking for used equipment, you should attend a fiber festival mm -hmm. because that's where I got my used wheel. Yeah, and like it's impossible. It's super easy to find like a used Ashford traditional because there's millions of them and they're not very expensive. But like I spin on a match list and you cannot like they're hard to find and so i got it at a fiber festival yeah, yeah. where and you got to take it home right away and i could try it yeah <laughs> so i was gonna yeah. say that's the thing is you could try you can it try yeah. it and yeah 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 awesome well you know my bit of equipment the loom the loom <laughs> so the i moved it into us. my bedroom and i went to start um threading on i don't know what the terms are and I don't have, or I didn't have the little hook I need to get it through the dents. Oh. <clears throat> so I ordered that and it just arrived. So oh, good. I, I have warped off my length of warp and I'll be threading on hopefully this weekend. What are you going to leave first? I think it's just going to be a 10 inch, you know, scarf it's shape. And I'm just going to, you know, it's not very long because I need to practice the whole threading on stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I will hook up the treadles to make some patterns and that'll be it trying to remember how to do all this thank goodness for my friend amber who was over the other day and was like no no no, this is what you need to do i'm like oh yeah yeah i it's find a lot it to think it really helps i for like for me when i learned how to spin i had a friend in town who also knew how to spin already and so she was very helpful with like you know if i was frustrated with something she would say okay so like take a breath <laughs> take yeah. a step back this is what you need to do yeah take a break first yeah and like i mean i understand that like uh, you know we as knitters are that person for all sorts of people <laughs> that yes. we teach how to knit but yes it's nice to... it's funny though you're making me think of how knitting traditionally always was taught from generation to generation like mm -hmm. my mom taught me how to knit and yeah you know um we've heard sure. stories in the hap along about um you know, an aunt moving away and then, you know, once a week you'd get that one phone call to the aunt to call yeah. and ask about, you know, the next section of the hat. <laughs> yeah. And there was no written instructions. It was no, all mouth all... Uh, by mouth. And so, yeah, I think um, with all the technology that we have now, anyone can learn to knit on their own, but, or, or yeah. learn any new craft, but I think having a friend, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's interesting again, I learned from my mom who learned from her mom who learned from mm. her mom who was from Ukraine. So mm, there's nice. the, what you need in the Eastern style through the back loops. That's why I knit so quickly. <laughs> People always ask me how. It's also a great, um, I tried knitting yeah. away because after Did I you? saw that video, I'm like, Did I gotta watch? try this. Yeah, I, I was have, an utter train wreck. I, ch I teach my <laughs> close friends to knit that way because I know that I'm close to them if they need yeah. help. Um, so like knitting knits that way and I also just recently taught a lefty how to knit and that was like very helpful for yeah. for her because yeah. um, there's a lot more just w work with the left hand and right. that yeah. type of knitting. So yeah. well, I'm already a continental knitter yeah, so, so I'm that, already yeah. holding it that way so yeah. I could do it but I'm like it's I'm so already weird. so much faster just doing yeah, exactly. it the way that I do it. But... Because your hand wants to do what it wants to do. And yeah. We should probably get stitches. a video of you doing just, yeah. just knitting along. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now that I have a camera mount. Yeah. yeah 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 that's easy enough yeah so maggie what's next um so that's pretty much it the last thing we have is um kim is gonna take us out with some yoga yeah we saved yes. the best for last to go off and relax and uh do some poses and we'll see you in a couple of weeks right yes. yeah yes yeah. we'll be back in a couple of weeks early august so yeah 
Thank you, Emma, for being oh, here. So, so happy to see you in person. <laughs> I know. I feel like I, you yes, know. normally we would have a segment from Emma. Yeah, yes, but, but I'm just here, which yes. is yeah, this no, is and I yeah, we only get to see each other once a month. I know, here, like, usually right back, mm -hmm. right back. So yeah, I mean, is, is everybody starting to think about right back yes. out there? Yes. I know, I know, it's so exciting. Yeah, so hopefully you are thinking about that too and making plans. Um. For our party house. <laughs> I can't wait. The, the knitting house. The quietest party house ever. Maybe not. Maybe no, we crazy. talk we so not. much. Yeah, yes, for sure. I don't think it'll be quiet. No. It'll be quiet. We're all going to be like, did you see this? Did you see this? Did you see this? There's like a yarn everywhere. <laughs> it's my dream. We're not going to want to leave. It's true. I mean, we might get stuck there forever. I know. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for coming really great thank having you, you on the show thank you for having me i'm fun. so excited to be here yeah yeah and maggie thank you as always happy to be here yes and so i think all that's left to say is if you go out take your knitting bye bye <laughs> well summer is here and uh boy it's nice to get outside in this lovely weather but when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you don't really feel like you're ready. Your body's not quite ready to get out there in this nice, lovely weather. And so today's practice is all about shaking off the cobwebs, knocking up the rust and uh, enjoying a short, sweet practice in the beginning of the day so that the rest of your day can be filled with those moments of just pure bliss for our short, short, glorious summer season. You can always follow me on Instagram or Facebook, YouTube at Turning Ground Yoga. And you can always find me on my website as well, turninggroundyoga.com. Enjoy your practice. Start in a comfortable seated position and begin to roll your head from side to side, making a beautiful half circle with your chin moving your ear from shoulder to shoulder. Breathe deeply and feel your spine nice and tall with your head rotating atop. Reach both hands down and then take your right hand up and over, grasping the head, gently applying a little pressure to increase the stretch and then sweeping the fingers of the left hand back and forth, back and forth. Repeat the process on the other side and notice when your arm moves forwards or backwards, where do you feel the stretch? How does it change and how does it unlock any tightness in your neck? Release both hands <clears throat> and you're going to start to move the rib cage. So press the ribs forward, then to the side, then to the back, then to the other side. And you can do this in four parts if it's easier or speed it up and make a circle out of it, stretching all the muscles that connect to the ribs and along the thoracic spine. And now go the other way either moving in four parts if it's easier or all together in a fluid circle, paying attention to what's moving and stretching and feeling good. Reach your left arm up and over, now stretching from the hips all the way to the fingertips. Same thing on the right side, <clears throat> moving from left to right, left to right, opening all along the side of the body. Let your breath be your guide and move with the rhythm of your breath. And then start to swing, twisting with just a moderate amount of pull from side to side. This is a seated cat-cow, 
So you're still seated in easy, po easy pose and you're kind of grasping the knees with your hands as you flex the spine forward and back, moving between an arched spine and a rounded spine. Just knocking off the cobweb cobwebs and clearing away the rust. If you are seated on anything comfortable, get that out of the way. We're gonna move on to the back part of our bum now. Feet are as wide as the mat and you're gonna rotate the hips side to side, bringing the knees as far down as you can get them comfortably. You're gonna feel a stretch probably along the front side of the thigh. Just let it happen, make it feel good. You don't ever wanna do something that hurts, but you do wanna feel an opening. So find that happy place. And then come onto your sits bones. Your legs are nice and straight. And you're just going to make yourself come forward and back like a wave. And as you come forward, you'll feel a stretch through the hamstrings. It's not meant to be painful or intense. Just a very gentle morning stretch to wake the body up. And to just get everything moving the way it should. Now take that right leg back behind you. If this doesn't feel good, keep both legs in front. The leg is behind you to the side of your right hip. You stretch forward first to stretch through the hamstrings and then you lean back as far as you can get. You can always use your hands to support you. Any level of stretch backwards is good. We're just getting into those quads in the front of the thigh and maybe even in the front of the hip. Breathe deep here, make sure nothing hurts, and then use your arms to lift yourself back up, and we'll switch sides. So you're gonna reach forward first, in a version of half Hanumanasana, and then come back to wherever back is. You can rest on your hands, elbows, or all the way back on your head, as long as nothing's hurting. No pain, no pain. That's the most important thing to remember in yoga. Undo your leg, cross it over your right leg and pull yourself up into um, a reclined pigeon. You can also add a little ankle twist just to unlock some of the tightness that sometimes seeps into our ankles when we're sleeping. Switch sides, threading the needle, rolling the ankle and opening through the hips and the legs. Good. Now, happy baby, the very happiest pose of all. Just grab onto the tops of your feet, pulling the feet down towards the floor and rocking side to side, unleashing the hips, letting everything open up and enjoying a small little back massage at the same time. Grab behind the knees, rock and roll a few times, massage the back in a different way. And roll yourself all the way up. And now you're ready for your day. Thanks for practicing with me. Okay, Maggie. So this is very exciting. Um, I should mention we're both wearing our new t-shirts, yes. which are lovely. This is Joy sitting on a craggy rock on um, Fair Isle with the cliffs and our sheep and our knitting and everything. And those are in the shop now. Yeah. All right. Um, prizes thank you first of all for everyone who entered we had so many of you enter it was really fun and we're really excited to give this uh give these prizes away they're some of the best things we have at the woolly thistle aren't they they are and uh, really fun to do that on this special occasion so without further ado let's announce the winner shall we yes all right starting with um let's see the vanilla kit mm -hmm. and who was the winner of the vanilla kit so the winner of the vanilla sweater kit um is helen alessi uh helen if you can email us at info at the woolly thistle and put birthday winner in all in all caps we will get you your choice of vanilla sweater kit um in color and size so just let us know exactly let us know the color and size and i think this uh, instruction is good for everyone send us an email to info at the woolly thistle and put birthday prize winner in all caps. That way you jump out and we can get you your prize off to you. This is very exciting. So congratulations, Helen. And then what's the next one we're going to give away for? The next one is the brand new Dunrobin 
Um, and uh, Let Lopi, your yeah. choice of any of the Let Lopi Dun Robin colors. Yes, and the winner for that one is Tara Kane. Congratulations, Tara. That's very exciting. So send us an email. Um, and then after that, we have. The Dun Robin in Studio Donegal, which is gorgeous. And the winner of that one is Lorraine Dawson. Woohoo! Send us an email. And then number, let's see, um, Harris Tweed Tote. So your Harris Tweed Tote comes in a lovely dust jacket, and inside is the beautiful bag. They can choose which color. From, um, from the bags that we have in stock, yes. Right, so we've got the gray and we've got the thistly purple color. The mm -hmm. charcoal is out of stock. So yes. both of them are beautiful. You have your choice. And who's the winner? And the winner of this beautiful bag is Linda Vitro. Well done, Linda. Ooh. Thank you for entering and congratulations. Send us an email. All right. All right. Yeah. And next up is the Studio Donegal blanket. Mm -hmm. um, this beautiful blanket right here goes to Carrie Klein Walden. Congratulations. Yay. You win this. You're so lucky. All the winners are so lucky. I hope that you are excited. So if you send us an email, we'll get that in the mail to you. Yes. And um, the winner of this beautiful um birthday box this special box that we've put together stuffed with some of the best yarns from the little it is Whistle. we actually have to go buy a bigger box it, we do it won't ship in this box we need a bigger box yeah but um, all of this i mean we had so many beautiful we've got rama we got rambler we've got woolly mammoth and we haven't even uh, introduced this yarn yeah. yet but this is very special there's um, Portland Wool from um, Armscot Manor. Thank you. There's Moda, which is brand new from Wool Dreamers. And I'm sure there's stuff. Oh, there's Uradale, which is crazy good. And Tuku Wool. And I think there's Old Centrum in here, too. I think so. It's yeah. ridiculous. It is, it is just. It's the sort of. It's the sort of. You know what? If you, want to, if you want to wish me a happy birthday, this is definitely the sort of thing I would yes. like. <laughs> me, too. <laughs> so, who's the winner, Maggie? So, the winner of this big, beautiful box is Willa Bowens. So, Willa, go ahead and send us an email. We will get this box delivered so <gasps> to you. So fun. And the final prize is a $200 gift card to the Woolly Thistle where you can get whatever Everyone. your heart desires. Yes, and that winner is Deborah Hindman. Congratulations send us an email we'll get that off to you well that was fast that was very <laughs> fast so if you're a winner do get in touch send us an email we'll get that right out to you and if you didn't win just know that you're still a winner because you're here with us and we love you and we love being with you and enjoying your company here on the shopcast in our facebook group everywhere um instagram and ravelry probably are the main places where you'll find us so thank you so much for being here we really appreciate you yeah. i think all that's left to say is if you go out take your knitting bye, bye.